Good afternoon, everyone. The silence. Okay, a very good afternoon to all of you who've come and welcome to the College of Arts and Law Welcome event. Um, on behalf of our Head of College, Professor Andrew Stockley, and our Director of Education, Professor Elaine Fulton, I have the pleasure of saying to you all, welcome to the college, those of you in the room and those of you uh, who are online. So, welcome to everybody. So whether you're an undergraduate student or a postgraduate taught student, I'm delighted that you've chosen to pursue your degree in the humanities or in law at the College of Arts and Law. This afternoon's event is meant to be informal, so you know I know the rows and this room doesn't make it feel that way, but it is. And several of us are in, in the college are here. You know, we've got colleagues on that side of the room. And at the back of the room, you will notice um, little signs which are for your different schools. So at the end of the event, uh, when we have coffee and biscuits, if you uh, go to the post where you've got your school name on it, you will meet uh, colleagues from the school. Um, my colleague, Dr. Matthew Francis, who's over there, will be leading the question and answer session uh, in a little while, and you'll be able to post your questions. So please do during the course of the event, and we'll start to answer those uh, later on. Most of you would have already had your school and department welcomes, and I certainly hope that several of you would have already met your personal tutors. I know I met my students yesterday. Uh, and so essentially, actually, you're ready to begin. Um, you've probably heard the sort of timeless metaphor of being on a journey when you begin something new. Uh, but I'm not going to give you the journey metaphor today. I'm, in fact, going to give you something that's very close to my heart, and that is baking. So I'm going to give you a metaphor on baking. I see some smiles from my colleagues who know me probably too well. So if you're a baker, or even if you're not a baker, you can't bake a brilliant cake without a few things. First of all, you need to plan, and plan quite carefully to get the right kind of quality ingredients, and certainly precise measurements. And you get it all in a really good mix, and out comes a very brilliant cake. Your time here is similar. Planning is one of the most important things you will do. Planning from just getting to classes, you know, preparing for seminars, lectures, workshops, planning, preparing for your assessments. You know, that's the, that's the first stage. Then you've got what we call the quality ingredients. You are the first quality ingredient. You've made it here to the University of Birmingham, one of the best institutions nationally and internationally. So, you know, so you've got that with you. You've, you be taught by inspirational teachers who will really stretch you uh, intellectually. You're drawn into a community of student experience um, officers and well-being tutors, some of whom are here today, who will provide that kind of scaffolding opportunity for you and make sure that you get through your degree uh, well. And of course, you will draw on the excellent expertise of our professional and administrative colleagues in your departments and schools who are a wealth of knowledge and information on the day-to-day -day matters, uh, things that matter to your degree. With a good mix of societies, of sports, of volunteering opportunities, of all the other things that we offer at the university and indeed in the college, in three or four years' time, you will have made the most of your time with us. As a college, we will share this experience with you, mostly cheering you on, sometimes holding your hand, and sometimes giving you a shove to get you over that finishing line. But just as you are here today, on the first day um, uh, at this university, one day you'll be in this great hall uh, on your degree, graduate, uh, degree congregation. As a final note, one of the things that I hope you will come to learn about the college is that, is that we value each of you as individuals. Some of you have come straight from A-levels. Some of you have had a period of uh, time perhaps working. Some of you have come from abroad. But whichever route you've taken, it's important to us to learn about how that has shaped you and how we can then shape you for your future. We value each of you. In this college, we collectively celebrate your individuality. A very, very warm welcome from me to all of you uh, to the College of Arts and Law. Thank you. I now have the pleasure of inviting three people to address you in turn. So first of all, uh, Professor Deborah Longworth, our Pro Vice-Chancellor for Education, 
and then Professor Celia Greenway, our Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor for Student Experience, and finally Acacia Matthews, who's president of our guild. So starting with Professor Longworth. Thanks, Aganthi, and um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a real uh, uh, pleasure to, to see you all and, and be here with you today. Um, I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor for Education, and so one of the, the real pleasures of my job is that I get to formally welcome you to your first week at the university. Um, I am a professor of English literature, so I might actually teach some of you over the, the next few years. I wasn't able to say that to the engineers this morning. Um, but I also hope I'll see many of you around campus or at events or in the kinds of focus groups um, work with students that I'm regularly involved in with students. Um, I will probably be conferring your degrees at the end of, of your time with us here as well. Um, I was very privileged on Monday to represent the university at the Queen's funeral in Westminster Abbey. Um, and while I was sort of sat for a good three and a half hours in the Abbey waiting for, for things to start, um, I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you today. And what struck me in particular actually about the morning and the lead up to the event was the number of people that coming from all over the country, all over the world, um, and the community that was developing amongst strangers, really, across London. Now, you will make very good friends during your time with us, friends that will stay with you for life, but this week, everything probably feels quite new. You'll be meeting people for the first time, um, making friends, uh, uh, meeting the, 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 the fellow students on your, your courses or in your, in your personal tutor groups. Um, but what I saw on Monday was people from all over the country, all over the world, different cultures, different backgrounds, coming together with one thing in common. It was new. None of us had been through that experience before. None of us had been to the funeral of the monarch before. And whether you were the police, the servicemen, those of us sat in the nave, um, you know, Boris Johnson or Joe Biden, none of us really quite knew what to do. So we had our instructions, we had our calendar, we had our timetable of where we were to be and what we were supposed to do. But we hadn't been through that experience before. We weren't really quite sure what we were supposed to be talking about with, with the rest of the people around us. It was new to everyone. And what people did do was smile and say hello. And in the queue as we went into the Abbey, about every five steps or so, there were, um, the, the police were standing and every single policeman or policewoman would say good morning, hello, or smile um, and say hello. And I never said hello so many times to people in the space of about one minute. And eventually at the end of the queue, one of them said, I'm not really sure what else we're supposed to say and I'm not sure if I should say it's a good morning because it's a funeral. And, and everyone was sort of in that, that space. But very quickly, we became a community, a community that formed out of that collection of strangers. We were able to, um, to talk to each other and spend those few hours together. And if I saw those people who were sat around me or stood with me again, I know we have a rapport that we would pick up. Now our community here includes students and staff from across the country, internationally, from different cultures and different backgrounds. For all first years, for all new PGTs, university is a new experience. None of you have done it before. And so I think my real piece of advice to you is wherever you are, um, you know, to turn to the person next to you, the person in the queue, the person in the library, or just passing you across campus, and smile and say hello. And if somebody does that to you, reaches out to you to smile and say hello back, otherwise we'll all look slightly nuts. But it's that kindness, that basic human connection that builds a community from strangers, from which you will develop those strong friendships, but also build a broader bond across all those who study and work at the university. So smile and say hello, that's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice is to get involved in all of the different opportunities that university offers you. It's our job to support you to develop academically, personally, and professionally during your time with us. But that development is about so much more than your programs, your assessments, and your grades. And I cannot emphasize that enough. 
you will enjoy a really rich and rewarding educational experience with us. Engage with your tutors, engage with what they are teaching you, engage with all of the varied learning opportunities that are available to you on your programmes and across the university um, more widely. But also, make sure you take time to join clubs and societies or to volunteer to be a representative or an ambassador in the various roles that many of your schools and programmes will offer. Take part in our opportunities to, uh, uh, to be giving service back to the wider community, to be involved perhaps in focus groups about um, student experience, curriculum change in the university. All of these things contribute to your development. All of these things broaden and add to your CV. All of those things shape you into the, the sort of rounded whole student that um, our employers are telling us that they're looking for in the graduates that, in, that um, apply to them after university. So firstly, smile and say hello. Secondly, take every opportunity to get involved. Have a wonderful first term with us and a very warm welcome. Thank you. Hello everybody, and I feel extremely lucky to be able to speak to you today in your first week at university. So I'm Celia, I'm responsible for personal academic tutoring and student representation. I work alongside Deborah and indeed Acacia from the Guild to make sure that you feel supported in your studies by your academic tutors and by the community. So all of you this week should have been assigned a personal academic tutor, and that tutor will stay with you throughout your time at university. For undergraduate and postgraduate taught students, we put the tutorial at the heart of what we do, and we talk about how to support you, how to bring on your academic skills, and how to help your personal development. So one of the things that I would say, wouldn't I, because I'm responsible for tutorials, is that they're a hub. So actually, they're a hub of information is the way to look at your tutor. So your tutor will be able to help you find the right support for you. Some of you may have questions about how to write an essay, and your tutor can refer you to the appropriate academic skills and development. You may have questions about your emotional support. You may be feeling anxious. Your tutor can signpost you to well-being. So actually, your tutor is a really re useful resource, and I urge you to attend tutorials to get the most out of your experience. And also, I would say that I've got on here the Guild of Students, which Acacia is going to talk to you about. But one of the things that Deborah spoke about was being involved beyond your course. And my daughter actually was a student in Cal. So she, like you, was sitting in her first week and thought, what can I do? She rang me and said, Mum, I've joined the St. John's Ambulance. And I was thinking, this is very, very unusual. She's never shown any desire to be in the health trade before and she said it's because I can get into gigs for nothing. Now this seemed much more of a, a real career to me then. So what happened then actually, she was doing philosophy which doesn't lend itself to the health professions but from doing her volunteering with the St John's Ambulance she became interested in health and well-being and happiness and became is now an occupational therapist. So sometimes the things that you do outside of your programme are the things that give you that lasting connection and your career. So Deborah said about the community of strangers. So I'm going to say to you that you're a community of learners. If you look around the room now, you, these people in the room, people on your course, people that you meet in a queue could actually be of lasting significance to you. So I, for example, met my husband in the first month at university. So I'm not, I'm not saying that we're a dating agency and I can guarantee you a life partner. However, I am saying that you may meet a meaningful friend. I also met my best friend ever, who's still my best friend to this day, on my second day at university. And he's a godfather to my child, and my child is bridesmaid to his child, etc. So, you know, these, these are long-lasting connections. So I've talked about the university support network, but you actually, 
You are your best support network. So your peers, these people in the room, and the people on your course will offer you a great deal of support. As Deborah said, you're all new. You're all new. You may not be new to the city. You may not be new to the university. But you're new to this particular experience. So those of you in the room that are, are seasoned and are actually used to being part of Birmingham, do help those that aren't. And equally so, if you're a stranger to the city, tr find somebody that isn't and find out about our great city. Explore. And finally, this is a strange thing to say to you, but sort of I'm channeling the marriage vibe here. This is the, the first week of the rest of your lives. But actually, this is. So we're trying to make you to become confident, articulate learners, to take your place in society. So as Deborah was saying, and Acacia will say to you, do make the most of all those other opportunities. We're talking about educating the whole person. So you're more, much more than your final degree classification. You are that amalgamation of all the things that come together to make you the person that will eventually get a job and take their place in society. So I do urge you to join a society. If you haven't been to the Guild Society Fair, Acacia's going to join uh, to tell you about it, but I went yesterday. I'm now a keen member of the Doctor Who Society. So on that note, I'll leave you and say, if you see me on campus, smile and wave, and I will definitely smile and wave back. I do just want to say no pressure to meet a partner while you're at uni. I am not there yet either. Um, I'm Acacia, I am your guild president, um, which basically means I'm in charge, I'm like the president of your students' union, um, the Mermaid Fountain. So if you want to know where the actual building is, you go into the Green Heart, turn right, um, and it's a building with the massive fountain in the middle. Um, it's really cool. We host loads of different events there. So loads of societies are based there, but we also have club nights in the evening. And I'll just tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do, because I didn't know when I started uni. So the Guild of Students is made up and kind of run by seven elected full-time officers, of which I am one. Um, and our job is basically to make sure you have a great time at uni. If you're not, let us know in a nice email, I beg. Um, but basically, so you have the president, which is me. You have an education officer, a postgrad officer, a welfare and community officer, an activity and employability officer, a sport officer, and an international officer, as you can see. Um, my lovely team behind me. Um, and we also have seven part-time officers too. Um, so we have part-time officers for BAME, people with disabilities, LGBTQ+, trans and non-binary, women, ethical and environmental, and campaigns. So if any of these issues that affect these people affect you, things that you care about, you can get involved, get in touch, and we can help you with that. So that's one thing that the Guild does. Um, we represent your ideas and the things that you care about. And if you ever have any issues about these things, you can come to us and we can try and help you. Um, and then other things that we do, to add to the list, um, is everything beyond the lecture theatre and even within it. Um, there will be reps on your course, you can choose to be one if you'd like, and that's coordinated at the Guild. Um, so there are course reps, school reps, college reps, so all the way up, if you want to have a say as to how your lectures are run, if you've got any issues, want to represent your cohort, that's a good way to do it. We also have over 350 societies, um, from pastor society to battle reenactment to Doctor Who, like Celia was talking about, um, a whole range. And we have half of them in the activities fair at the Guild. So after this, I definitely recommend popping down and seeing what's on. Um, we also have democracy, we have elections. So that's how I was elected, how I'm in this weird role for a year, um, as well as advice on community and safety and housing. So if you need someone to check your housing contract, we do that at the Guild. Um, and we also offer financial advice and also some academic advice too if you've got an issue with your course. Um, and a whole load more, but I won't, I won't go on. Um, but yeah, we do a lot. 
Um, this week, we've also got a whole range of really exciting welcome events. So if you haven't been to the Guild for an event, I definitely recommend. Tonight, we have a silent disco, which is really cool. Um, and we also have Fab on a Saturday and Sports Night on a Wednesday. Again, really fun club nights. Um, and we also have some less clubby events too. Um, so the activities fair that we have today, and we have a give it a go fair from 11 till 4 tomorrow. Um, definitely re recommend coming down and saying hi. Um, and if you have any questions, if you want to take a photo of these emails, they're really great. Guild advice is a really good general one if you ever need anything. Um, and also just visiting the Guild website is great too. You can get in touch with any of your officers there. Um, and there's loads of advice on just living as a student, what student life is. Um, and yeah, just get in touch. I recommend getting involved. Try something new. You're at university and most people only do it once. So take advantage of it. Thank you. Okay, so I have the pleasure of inviting Dr. Matthew Francis um, to take over the next session, which is on um, the question and answer session. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Matthew Francis. I am, as you can see in the enormous letters behind me, um, the Acting Deputy Director of Education for the College of Arts and Law, which means that part of my job is to have oversight of all of the or aspects of the educational activity that take place in the college to make sure that things are working properly, to make sure that we have kind of proper ways um, of kind of monitoring your progress, assessing your work, that kind of thing. Um, I'm also, my, my normal job, I guess, is that I am uh, a lecturer in the School of History and Cultures. So any of you here on the BA History, or actually particularly on the BA History and Politics, may find that you encounter me at various points across the course of your degree. Um, so this next part of our welcome event is a question and answer session. Um, in a moment, a link is going to appear on the screen behind me at uh, something called Slido, where you can input questions for the rest of our panel to ask. I take it from the grins that that has, in a very timely way, appeared behind my head. Um, so this is really an opportunity to ask anything you want to know about kind of settling into life at university, what you can expect when you're here, the kind of services that we might have available to you. Um, if you have any particular kind of subject specific or program specific questions, you know, do feel free to ask those, but it, it may well be that it's, you get better answers, clear answers at the end. Um, to help me answer those questions, or I hope actually to answer those questions that I don't have to, um, I have a panel of four colleagues and indeed a student from the College of Arts and Law, um, and I'm going to, while you enter your questions, while you give us things to think about and queries to answer, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. So, Antonia, would you like to say who you are and, and what your role is? Absolutely. So, hello, uh, my name's Antonia Parker-Smith. I am one of the college's student experience officers, and I'm specifically based within the School of History and Cultures, and I recognise a few faces out there. Um, so, yes, you'll see me within the college anyway, but certainly if you are within the School of History and Cultures. My name is Marcus, uh, Marcus Farag Fury. I am the Wellbeing Officer for English Drama and Creative Studies, also known as EDAX. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just want to test this. Um, I think maybe there's a bit of feedback from some of the microphones, but um, my name is Gunai Romfunya. I was up here yesterday, so I do see some familiar faces from yesterday. Um, and pretty much I'm a law student, I'm in second year, but I'm also a law mentor, law student rep, and a whole other variety of things. So feel free to ask any questions. I'm sure anyone who's on this panel will have the answer to your question. My name is Professor Suginthi John, and I'm Deputy Director for, uh, of Education for Distance Learning and Digital Education. I'm from the Department of English Language and Linguistics and uh, in the School of English Drama and Creative Studies. Thank you. Suganthi, so, unlike me, is a proper Deputy Director of Education rather than just a temporary <laughs> one. Um, right, we've had a few questions come in. Please do feel free to kind of continue entering them as we go through. Um, I, I, the nice thing about having the iPad is that I have the power to pick questions, so I'm going to start by asking, and I think this is one that literally all of you can answer, um, what's the best way to make new friends on campus? Um, I don't have any friends, so I'm quite <laughs> interested to learn the answer to that. Um, to whoever wants to go first. 
Do you want to jump in, can I continue? Um, or yeah, you? sure. <laughs> I mean, you did say that there's one student on the panel, but I'm not really sure looking around. Everyone looks quite young on the panel. Um, anyways, you're not talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently you don't have any friends. But uh, So I think um, the best way to make friends um, in university, on campus, in student accommodation, varying locations, I would say is to just, first of all, just be bold, be confident. Um, I did speak a, a bit about this yesterday. Just kind of remind yourself that it's normal to feel as if you don't know anyone else because you're not the only one in that position. So once you realize that you're also looking for people in the same position as you, you realize that the same eagerness you have to connect with others, they have to connect with you. And I would say don't judge a book by its cover um, because some people really don't look approachable, but once you say hi to them, they have the brightest smile ever. So I would say just give it a crack. You will, and you will find that some people are easier to relate with than others, so don't be hard hit if you speak to someone and it's a bit awkward. Just move on to the next person, um, kind of like speed dating, but don't date them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think Ganai's hit the nail on the head there and uh, echoing what Deborah said earlier. Um, smile at people, say hello, and however cliched it is, you are all in the same boat, uh, or a similar boat at least, being uh, new to the university. Um, and yep, you've got a whole plethora of different backgrounds and different experiences, and whether they're the same or different, you'll be able to form connections with other people around you. So just say hello. I mean, at the end, we're going to be having coffee and biscuits, and there's no better way to make friends than over a hot drink and some biscuits. Um, so definitely um, be approachable and friendly there where you can. Good nice spot on. Some people um, are a bit more anxious, so don't judge a book by its cover. Be as welcoming, as inclusive as you can. Everybody's had different experiences. Um, and throw yourself into things. This is your first year at university, um, and you have the exciting opportunity to really throw yourself into the various societies that you've got available. Go to your seminars and lectures. Some of the best things, that best people you're going to meet are going to be people that are in the same boat as you on your program, in, in your course, in your seminars. Um, and take up those extra opportunities that come round to you as a student experience officer. Anybody in my school will know that they'll, they have already and will continue to receive a number of uh, emails from me um, with various opportunities and events available to you. And that's one of the places when I was a student here that I met some of my best friends. So um, yes, I think, I think echoing everything Ganai said um, and just saying throw yourself into things. Shall I jump in there? Um, I think it's, it's important also to be kind to each other. So if you're naturally outgoing and, you know, uh, naturally a friendly person, look out for others who may be slightly quieter. So, you know, be kind to each other, watch, look out for each other. I think Celia said community of learners. That's who we are. We're a community. So, you know, that's one of the things I think that's really important, just, you know, looking out for each other. And that's one way in which you actually start to make friends and help others make friends too. I feel like everything's been said. Um, but yeah, do um, chat with people uh, is kind of the biggest thing is um, certainly the, at those moments where you've kind of all stood outside a seminar room before it started, perfect time to just say hello. I certainly remember when I actually came here, I did drama and theater arts. Um, I spent the first hour, and I think everyone else in my flat spent the first hour as soon as we packed in just staying in our room and kind of remember that moment where all of us kind of just poked our heads out the door <laughs> and were like, there's other people here that I now live with for a whole year. Um, and yeah, it's just having that confidence to go, okay, cool, let's have a cup of tea, let's have a chat and see how things are. Thank you, everyone. Um, I've, there are two questions that have been very enthusiastically upvoted, and I'm going to ask the less serious one first. <laughs> so the less serious one, and, and Saganthi, this might be one for for you, Antonio, my one for you as well. Um, we've got a few people saying, I haven't been assigned a personal tutor yet, um, so who do I need to contact to find out who my personal tutor is? How do I go about getting assigned one? Yeah, so if you go to your department, your department office will be able to provide you with that information. So you should, if you haven't had an email yet, pop into the, the main um, office, administrative office for your department, and they should be able to help you and let you know who your personal tutor is. Um, I know that there are some uh, programs, 
specifically in the School of History and Cultures, where you will meet your personal tutor as part of uh, one of the core modules that you do next week. So you may not be, um, it's always worth an email, as Sagantha said, or popping into the office, but don't panic, you won't be lost. Um, and do just email if, you know, next week, Monday, you still haven't got a hold of anybody and we can work that one out for you. Yeah, I think the other thing, have we got anybody here on a joint honours programme? Just, just one, just one hand at oh, no, front. More. No more. Um, so the <laughs> other thing, if you are joint honours students, just just to note that you will probably only you'll have a personal tutor on one side of your programme, but not both. And that's not kind of odd. That's that's how that normally works. But we, I often take the history politics students because I know quite a lot about how the politics department works. If you if you think, well, should I have two personal tutors? You shouldn't. You should only have one. Um, but they they will know about both sides of the degree, or they should do. So I'm now going to ask the very important question that got asked. And I think this, this is genuinely a very important question. What's the best place for food nearby? Ooh. I knew it was going to be food related. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I can go first. Yeah, you go I, first. I, I'll I think. had a bit of experience with it yesterday. Um, so I think to break it down, you first of all need to um, see like what type of food you're talking about. So if it's groceries, um, we would advise you go to a place called Audi. Great thing with Audi is it's um, to the left of campus, so it's in Selly Oak on Bristol Road. That's where you'll find a lot of your essentials in terms of just like um, things that you eat your food with or just some vegetables or something. Another alternative to that is in the Bull Ring, in a place called The Market, so it's on the different side of The Bull Ring. If you're used to fresh fruits, like where I'm from, I'm from Zimbabwe, we're used to having fresh um, fruits, not really packed things. So if you want that kind of experience, there's a place in the Bull Ring around city centre where you can find that. Um, in terms of pubs, not that I drink, but I'm just keeping it professional. Um, in terms of pubs, I would say one of the best places to go is a place called Weatherspoons. However, though it's called Spoons, um, a lot of the companies will not actually be called spoons it will be called something like the snow um, shed or something so um, you will find a couple in town there is one on Broad Street which is quite popular um, so that's a weather spoon so you just type in weather spoons on maps and in terms of restaurants I'm sure I can leave that up to the panel or if anyone else knows about that I'm obliged to say at this point, by the way, other pub chains are available. <laughs> um, does not necessarily endorse Weatherspoons. Yeah. Uh, although if anybody from Weatherspoons is watching this and wants to exchange some cash for that endorsement, we can talk. Um, uh, yeah, so um, there's a good few pubs in Selly Oak if you're living there, and Harborn has loads of different places as well. Um, that's in the vicinity. Um, and the uh, Guild of Students, Joe's, is really great. It does sort of breakfast and brunch um, and uh, dinner and things like that, different things throughout the day. Um, and personally, campus-wise, I absolutely love a burrito. And that's over at University Centre. And they do a burrito bowl, which gets you more filling if you want to for, more, for the same amount of money. Um, but otherwise, one of the things that I learned in my final year of university here um, is that there is a Toby Carvery only a train ride away and if you're a student and you don't necessarily have all of the money in the world um, it's cheap for a lot of food so I would always suggest that um, uh, so that tells you more about me than you probably needed to know so uh, <laughs> what about you guys? Well, I'll just say I'm really boring and bring my lunch from home. So there are lots of microwaves on campus, you know, and you can, you can uh, warm up your food. Uh, that's one alternative. Uh, I remember coming here as an international student 22 years ago now from Singapore, where your main meal was always a hot meal in the middle of the day. Uh, and at that time, though, it was very difficult to find a hot meal in the middle of the day. But now there are lots of options on campus, but I tend to bring my food from home and pop it in the microwave in some of the student areas around. So, you know, that's, that's my food option, really. Um, I think I can jump in on that. So there is a microwave in this building. Um, if you go to the study, the study room, which is downstairs, so if you go out these doors to the right, the first set of stairs, if you go downstairs, there's a study space. And if you go through the door, there's like a microwave right there. So it took me a while to find that, but you know from today. Um, there are a couple other microwaves. There is a newly refurbished cafeteria um, that's underneath the uni center. So where there's the spa, um, if you go downstairs, just before you come back outside 
on the right side, there's like a fully fledged cafeteria. I think if any of you, I don't think any of you would be med students here, but the med school has its own. So we do have one on campus. Um, and in terms of bars, there's the Goose, which is in Selly Oak, again, once again on Bristol Road. Um, you tend to find a lot of things on Bristol Road, like Domino's, um, Pepe's, just different places as well for food. My favorite place is officially the hidden microwave. <laughs> been there for eight years and I've never known it was there. Um, I think in terms of, if again, the other side of things, if you do want something that is really nice but is pricier, um, someone's eyebrows just went, ooh. Um, Mowgli's in, in oh, yeah. the city center. It's literally in New Street Station. Um, it is some of the best Indian food that I've ever had and my Indian grandmother would hate me for saying that, but it is, it's fantastic. Um, but it, yeah, it's a bit more expensive. Thank you, I'm going to, since we've had, we've had a lot of endorsements of brands, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually gonna chip in on this one, say so if any of you want to venture a bit further afield or try something a bit different, there is a website called Independent Birmingham yeah. that has lists of like lots of different street food providers, kind of local pop-ups, things like that that's happening. Um, if you join their app, you can get discounts at all sorts of those places. Um, that's really good. We've actually had another food related, not that we're obsessed, we've had another food related question, which I think is actually a really good one. Um, and I'm gonna look down the road, but I'm also going to look at our two more senior colleagues in the front row here about this. Um, so questions come in, are there any halal food places on campus? I would, I would like to think that there almost certainly are halal options. Yeah. So um, I, I mentioned the burrito bowl, they offer um, a halal option, halal meat there definitely. Um, and um, I believe that Joe's does, but I'm looking if Acacia's still here, I'm not sure. There's definitely vegan yeah. options there, but I think, that, I think they do halal options there as well. Sorry? We've got a big thumbs up we've over got, there. So that's that's for those who couldn't hear, we've had confirmation that there are halal options. And um, Spa has some options yeah. as well for halal food. Um, right, we're going to move on from food. And it, I'm going to move on to a question that is not actually the most up, upvoted one, but I think is an important one. And Marcus, this is one, because you seem to have been last for all of them. Um, so this is one specifically for you. So we've had somebody ask, if a student with learning disabilities, learning difficulties, has had provisions in the past, such as extra time in exams when they've done their GCSEs or their A-levels, how can they ensure that these provisions kind of continue through their degree? What do they need to do to get those? You know, the, the language you might hear is reasonable adjustments. What do they need to do to make sure that they keep Yeah, so the university does offer what we call reasonable adjustments through what's called a reasonable adjustment plan. We call it a wrap for short. A reasonable adjustment plan will often sit within the same sorts of categories as the kind of support you might have had so that could be some extra time in exams and um, that could be one of them is applying for extensions without requiring further evidence which it's a long-term ongoing uh, learning difficulty for example that uh, impacts deadlines and, and how you approach them and um, the way that you can get in touch and find more about those is through what we call the student disability service uh, you can find a link to theirs through our canvas wellbeing pages which you should all either be on now or be invited to uh, over the next couple of days. Um, you have to fill in a, a quick form that just says who you are, um, the disability that you, you manage, and any uh, adjustments that you might have previously had or you might find useful. You then get assigned a disability advisor, so you can then, you always have a point of contact, someone who can work with you throughout your time at the university. Uh, and that, that process of getting a reasonable adjustment plan isn't a one and done thing. You'll have a meeting with them, they'll send you, they'll work through uh, what you might need. They'll send us a copy, so as wellbeing officers a copy, so that we can identify and make sure that's adhered to through the school. But it's also then your responsibility for any module to, any modules or seminars or lectures you sit in. If you want those reasonable adjustments known, take it to them. You can do it completely anonymously. If you'd like to do it through us, let us know and we can send it on your behalf so that they can make sure that they make those adjustments. There's quite a lot of adjustments that we do as a university anyway, so a lot of things that come up in reasonable adjustment plans tend to be things like wanting um, lectures, uh, uh, materials available 24 hours in advance, that's something that we do. Having reading lists that are clearly demarcated by week, something that we do. So some of those adjustments are things that happen as a university, some of them are more specific to what you might have in one of those plans. 
You can also then go and if you find actually your situation changes, either um, you have different medication or your condition's improved or, or changed in some way, you can go back to your disability advisor, you get that wrap updated, so if you have any further adjustments that you might need, and then again, that gets sent to us, so we always have the up-to-date copy of, of anything that you might need. And that's all handled completely confidentially. It doesn't get shared with anyone else who, who doesn't need to know that information. So it will mostly be a well-being officer, so we can make sure it's adhered to the school and the academic that you decide to share that with, because it's your information at the end of the day. Thank you, Marcus. Um, another non-food related question. Um, does the university or college help to organise work placements or work experience? And if so, how do they do that? What, what options have they got? Sorry, you've just seen me point at our brilliant colleagues from Careers Network at the back. Um, give us a wave. <laughs> brilliant. Um, I've just seen them arrive and I know that they do a lot of, a lot of different work. Um, I'm maybe not the best person to answer it, but certainly talk to them towards the end. Um, I know a lot of schools and a lot of uh, departments have a optional module um, called the profession no is it professional professional skills, skills module yes professional skills module um, that is available and that's where you get the opportunity to undergo a work placement as part of that module um, but um, I'm looking down the line to see if there's anybody else willing to add in yeah I'm going to add something about how we embed quite off the employer focused work mm. within modules as well so you know um, in in some of our second year modules we actually engage with employers to provide you with projects and things and you get a chance to engage with them and and write up projects so not quite a work uh, work placement as such but certainly an opportunity to reflect on some of the practices that uh, are in the sort of outside world, but, you know, making your learning really real and relevant to some of the things that you may face when you go out into the work world. So definitely lots of, of things and, and uh, our Cal Careers Network are brilliant at providing you with the information you need and the support you need. You know, look out for the emails that will come from them. I know it's your first day and you're not thinking about that as yet, but I think it's really valuable for you to just have a look around the website and, uh, you know, watch and watch for, for information coming your way because there are opportunities to apply for internships, learning how to just, you know, get your CV uh, spot on and all of that. And it's, it takes time to, to do those things. So, you know, make use of those opportunities because uh, it is a great team and they work really hard uh, to help you. Thank you. So we've got, we've got some related... No, they're not related at all. I don't know why I said that. We've got some questions come up, a, a set of related questions, I guess, about, about kind of modules and about timetabling. So a couple of people have asked, you know, I'm looking at my timetable and not all of my modules seem to be there yet. So what's, what's going on? What do I need to do about that? Um, somebody else has said they've got module clashes, so two seminars that appear to be at the same time. So who, who do they need to go and speak to about that? Where do they, where do they go for support? I would initially say talk to your department. There's usually, we've got a phenomenal um, group of colleagues who are part of the education support team who essentially, you, you might not see day to day, but they keep everything running. And I think a few of our colleagues um, who are from the education support teams will be um, here later so you can talk to them. But they essentially staff a lot of the email addresses that you would send a what's going on to. So in, in the School of History and Cultures, we've got, um, for instance, like history admin at contacts.beham.ac.uk, and these colleagues uh, will hopefully be able to point you in the right direction and make sure that things get sorted out for you. Um, and they, where, where they might not have the right answer, they will certainly know the people to direct you towards. So your schools should have, by this point, let you know like key admin contacts and key... Um, key email addresses to be aware of. So just check back through those pre-arrival communications that you were sent by the College of Arts and Law in, in the uh, uh, run-up to coming here, and you should be able to access them. But we'll, we'll be around at the back as well, so you can certainly chat to us and we can help you work it out on a sort of case-by-case -case basis. Um, is there anything else you think's worth adding there? No. Spot on. I think the only, the only thing I'd say about that to those of you who think you're currently missing something it does sometimes take, take a, a little bit, bit of time, actually, for, particularly for first-year students, just to kind of populate you in the timetable and to allocate you to groups. So it may well be that, that that sort of has happened this week and it just doesn't show up yet. So do you know if something's not there on Monday morning, then that's maybe the time to worry about it. But if it's not there this afternoon, it, it may still appear. Yeah, do keep checking back. 
Yeah. There is, so there is a linked timetabling question, and I'm going to ask it specifically to Saganthi because it's a really horrible one. <laughs> Thanks, um, Matthew. What's the difference between the pink, blue, and white bits on my timetable? I'm going to actually say I don't know. So I'm going to hand that back to you, Matthew. Remember why you don't have friends? <laughs> this, is, this is why I don't have friends, yes. Um, so, I mean, I asked that partly because I can't remember the answer to this question either, but if you search uh, UOB timetabling or University of Birmingham timetabling, there's a very helpful guide online, including a little YouTube video that walks you through how the timetabling app works and what the different things in it mean. Um, essentially, those different colors are kind of, they tag different types of event. So go online and have, and there are actually more of them in the system than that. So go online, have a look at the, the guide, have a, have a watch of that YouTube video. That will explain everything that you need to know about how that timetabling app works. Should have been really mean and asked Deborah and Celia if they knew what the different colors mean. That's, that, that, that might be a little bit too cruel. Um, right, what other questions have we got? Um, Marcus, I'm going to ask this one to, to you, I think, and actually, I, although I might have something to say about this as well. And, and to Antonia, so, so what happens during student support week? So that, that kind of week six, and again, the, the week that we have just before Christmas, what can students expect to be going on in those student support weeks? Sorry, say that again. What can students expect? What can students expect? Like, what happens in student support weeks when we hit week six and we've got student support week in the middle of the yeah, So there's... What can they expect? Yeah, um, it's, it's really a midpoint of the, uh, of the semester, and it's certainly a chance to... First and foremost, take stock of what you've achieved and where you're at, but also to take stock of what still needs to come. It's usually that midpoint between starting and having to submit those first few assessments. So it's a really good chance to check in with module tutors, seminar leaders, personal academic tutors, ask the questions you have, especially because I think most of the time the uh, essay questions will be released by that point. Um, so if it's, it's a good chance to start taking a look at some of the reading that you might need to revisit or you might want to do. There's also usually a lot of uh, academic support events that happen around that week, um, specifically focused on supporting you through what those upcoming assessments might look like, if you have timed assessments, how you might tackle those, if you've got essays, the, uh, the kind of support that you might need with those. Certainly, you're all welcome in, in that regard as well to talk with us as wellbeing officers, but also there's an incredible couple of services that I think have been mentioned before, but the Academic Writing Advisory Service, or AWAS, is a College of Arts and Law-based um, initiative that aims to support students, particularly in their essay writing. So you can send a plan, or you can talk to them about a section of their essay, or even if you go in and going, look, I've got this question, this is kind of what I know, help. Um, they can start to talk you through exactly where you might go, the areas you might want to read through, how you can structure things to, um, to improve your marks slightly further. There's also, as I think Saganthi mentioned, the Academic Skills Center, which is an incredible resource run by the library services that includes, I think they do one-to-one -one appointments, they also do workshops, and they have a great resource on uh, on how to write academic work, how to research everything from study time, time management and pretty much everything that you could want to know about, about assessments and, and getting through them. They probably have uh, an article on there. We've also got, got what's called the Cal Education Support Gateway, which is again, another resource from uh, academics and wellbeing officers and student experience officers across the college that aims to support you with not only the academic side, but also the emotional and mental and well-being side of, of tackling those assessments and, and working through university. So assessment support week is, is certainly the time to, to take stock, to make the most of that, that breather, that time now to focus on what's going to come ahead and, and how to get through those assessments, like it's called assessment support week. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there's slightly broader opportunities yeah. available specifically in student support week, which is that middle one. Um, which aren't, there are things that go on that aren't always totally related to assessments but might be tangentially related. So there might be like workshops um, that you might want to attend. I know that actually in the College of Arts and Law, we've got an event called Pride Not Prejudice happening in um, 
in our student support week, which is week six. And this has grown from an initiative that we had um, begun in 2019. And it's basically a book-based initiative where we use books as a catalyst to talk about themes of um, identity and inclusivity and diversity and equality and all of that sort of thing. Um, and we have a panel of speakers and they come and talk about their experience or talk about their interpretations of the book. I'm just having a look at... Saganthi's been involved briefly in the past talking with us all, haven't you, and things like that. So, um, yes, so it's a really wonderful opportunity to come together. I think we have some of our books that we're looking to use available this year at the back. They're, yes, so you can go and have a look there. We've currently got the form still open to vote on the books that we'd like to use. Um, and then there'll be an event that we will put on in Student Support Week, which will be essentially a group of us all coming together, a panel event, I assume, um, where people get to talk about those books and we can share in what is a um, supportive and where possible safe space all of different experiences and things that we might want to sort of move forward on and work on um, so th there's all sorts of events like that available um, during student support week and so I really do suggest to, that you take that opportunity as we was said earlier to, to throw yourself in and just get involved with it because that is the sort of thing where you start to just develop those extra skills that those extra interests those extra connections that really propel you forward into um, life in and beyond university can I just come in on that and say there'll be a timetable of events for Student Support Week so you will know exactly what's going to be available um, during that week ahead of time so you can plan that uh, well in advance and you know there'll be college level activity there will also be sort of discipline specific mm -hmm. activity so your own schools and departments will put sessions on for you so you know take note of the different things that are off on offer you will know that ahead of time so you can actually plan which ones you want to go to uh, but it's an incredibly useful week to, to actually explore a little bit more than just kind of going to classes and things. And in your first year, it's a nice opportunity to sort of stop for a bit and just take stock of where you've come. And you've come a long way after five weeks. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a nice midpoint to actually look at all the different things that are available to you um, in, in, during that week. Thank you, Saganthi. So we've... Week. Thank you, Saganthi. So we've, we've kind of had about, coming up to the hour mark now, Saganthi, I know, is very keen to get to the biscuits that are at the back of the room. But I think we do, we do need to ask kind of three more questions. So I've got one more serious one for everyone, one quite nice one for everyone, and then I have a very special question for Ganai, which we'll finish with. And if you're looking at the slider, you will all know what that question is, but Ganai does not know what that question is. So the, the serious one to kind of kick us off, and I think probably all of you can kind of say something about this. Um, we've had lots of queries in about if, if you're absent, if you're unwell, if you know you're going to have to miss a seminar or a lecture for some particular reason, like what should you do? Um, who do you need to tell and you know what resources can people expect to help them catch up and to keep on top of things I mean Gunai would you like to go first on that one? Um, yeah sure um, so I do realize that there's a, a word that goes around from old students to new students and they kind of tell you that first year doesn't really matter um, you come in and the grade is not you know added to your final mark um, as a law student, I would say that definitely, even if it doesn't count necessarily towards your final grade, whatever you do do in first year will be massive in terms of trying to get placement somewhere, trying to get a vacation scheme, um, trying to get into any sort of law-related um, practice over summer. They do specifically ask for your percentage. So that's something I found out the hard way. Um, so don't be like me. Uh, but then I would also say, um, a lot of things do happen during the course of university. Um, a lot of pressure is put on people of young age to just organize their life to actually all of a sudden develop life admin skills. Um, that's something my sister likes saying. She calls it life admin skills. So you're still trying to make friends, still trying to find out what's going on in the university. Um, there's a bank of resources at the University of Birmingham. There's so many things on offer. You're trying to organize all of those things. So yes, you will have times where maybe you're a bit late to a lecture or you don't even know you have a seminar, some timetabling um, issues. I would say that this is why it's more important to see who's around you. 
um, get involved in those WhatsApp groups. I know a lot of, it helped a lot of people last year, just having that WhatsApp group to actually say, oh, by the way, where's this class? Where's this lecture hall? Um, we have this thing going on. And I would say if you are late to one of them, just kind of sit down in the class because the lecturer will be speaking. So don't feel like you need to go to the lecture whilst they're still speaking. I would say maybe just come towards the end and ask, oh, I missed the first 10 minutes. Is there anything you can tell me about it in brief? Because usually lecturers will be rushing to the next um, lecture that they have. In terms of missing a lecture, I think things are recorded. Um, don't get into that habit because you will find out that watching a two hour video on a subject is not as easy as it looks, even on two, two times speed. So I would say um, keep a record, keep a record of what you have gone to, what you have missed. So for example, if you miss week six, lecture one of the week, then just keep a note of that somewhere and then try to research more into that area if you don't feel confident of what you've missed. Um, but in general, I would say it will happen at some point where you're a bit tired, maybe you've missed something, but once again, it's important to have that community around you, people doing the same subject as you, have those groups whenever there's an assignment coming out. People are always looking for information, and funny enough, information is also in people. So the more people you know, the more confident you'll be in your course. I think the, the other thing in that is, is let us know. Stay in touch with us. The more that we know, the more we can support you in those cases when, when you might miss something or if actually it, it turns into something bigger. So we do have a team uh, in the College of Arts and Law. It's called the Student Attendance Team. Who would have thought? Um, the Student Attendance Team are responsible for monitoring attendance um, and, and highlighting where students haven't attended but that's really a supportive measure uh, so that we can see if someone's not attended a series of sessions, we can try and figure out is there something actually going on there? Is it a long-term sickness that we don't know about that we're not able to support just yet? So uh, they have an intranet page. If you Google uh, University of Birmingham student attendance team, they'll be the first one that you find. Um, you should also likely at some point be told about, about that process. Um, uh, either in your introductory lectures or, or beyond. Uh, the student attendance team um, have, have a certain set of ways that you can tell them that you've missed something. So uh, there's what's called a declaration of absence. So if you do miss because you're unwell, that happens every now and then. Um, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But just log it there so that when it's, it's as simple as completing a, a quick form that'll take you a couple of minutes and says, this is the module that I missed in the seminar or lecture. This is why I missed it and you send that in. It just means that if they do notice that you've, uh, your attendance has dropped, they're not immediately going to come around and be like, is everything okay? We need to definitely find out what's, what's happening. So they can go, oh, okay, you were, you were unwell or you were self-isolating or, or, or what have you at that point, so you weren't going to come into campus. The other thing then is once you've done that, go and chat with that module leader or go and chat with that lecturer. If you feel that there's something you've missed, especially when you start to get closer and closer to those assessment deadlines, you go, actually, that was a topic that I really was interested in. I want to write an essay on that. Go and ask them. The way that I say always structure those is try and have some questions in mind. Uh, so when you go to them, it's not just, hello, what did I miss of your one hour seminar? You can go, look, I've done this reading, but I was really unwell. Um, what, I, I don't quite get this quote, or I'm trying to understand this argument. Do you have any ideas of where I can read further or what can I do? So go in with those questions and always try and leave with some clear actions in mind. I think we've all had those brilliant meetings where you sit down with someone and go, oh, I feel so much better. And the moment you sit down at your desk to start doing things, you have no idea what it is you're meant to be doing. <laughs> so feel free to go in, take some notes. And if they say, actually, this is the thing to read, take a note of that. If they go, this is how you could improve an essay or this is the kind of discussion that we spoke about, take those notes. So when you sit back down, you can actually catch up with that work instead of going, okay, well, I spoke to them and I watched the lecture online and now I'm at a bit of a loss. So, so get in touch with those members of staff and those academics and submit that absence just so we have it on record. Can I come in on that? So, you know, sometimes your absences are planned. So you've got a driving test or a doctor's appointment. You know, it's worth just dropping an email to your tutor to say, I'm not going to be in class on Tuesday for the workshop, or I need to leave early because I've got a doctor's appointment. You know, it's, it's about sharing that information. So, you know, your tutors know that you're not there and for what reason. If you're not well in the morning and you haven't had the chance to send an email, when you, as soon as you feel a bit better, send them an email and say, I'm sorry I missed uh, the class, I was not well. 
I had a stomach bug, whatever it is. And then, you know, remember we have office hours. So we, we sit in our offices waiting for you to come to talk to us. And that's the opportunity. So if you've missed something, materials are, will be on Canvas. So you'll have the workshop, you'll have seminar notes, you'll have other resources, you will know what the reading is. Uh, try and do some of the work, you know, initially on your own. And then take note of your questions, as Marcus says, you know, come having done something and said, you know, I, I really don't understand this, or I'm not sure how to, uh, how to work through this activity, and we'd be more than happy to have, help you. So, you know, use those office hours, because all of us have office hours, and they're usually published on your Canvas module page, so we'll, you will know when your tutor's office hours are and where to find them. Um, I have something else to add. So, as an international student, I will also tell you now that even though they say they don't really um, count how often you don't come to class, the UK government definitely does. So if no one's banging on your door, for example, the student attendance team, because I've never heard of them until today, <laughs> um, but if they're not banging on your door, someone will be measuring that. It's like an automated system that measures that. Um, I think they introduced a new system where you have to put in a specific code to actually show that you're in class. It was launched in the law school, which is why probably I know about it, but I'm not sure if it's moved on to the other colleges. Yeah, it has. And yeah. It's, so yeah. that is integral um, because that's now a visa thing. So it's not even about how well you're doing in class or anything like that, but that actually affects um, the status of your visa and the probability of you getting further stay if you then apply for it afterwards because they do monitor and take these things very seriously. So please try best to attend all of your lectures. And, and it isn't just monitoring um, visa students, that student attendance process, that it, it's uh, monitoring everybody, including international students. So you are, you are monitored um, in that sense, just, just to clarify. Yeah, can I, I mean, I can't emphasize strongly enough what can I say is if you're an international student, please do make sure that you register your attendance at all of your sessions. It's really important that you do. Um, but again, I think summarizing that, you know, people have talked about office hours. In some places, these would be called different things. So they might be called student hours. And as Saganthi says, we are literally sat there waiting for you to come talk to us, waiting for you to come and ask us questions. As I said, I have no friends, so really I just want the company. Um, please do come and see us. They are quite widely advertised. and. All or almost all of your lectures, if you're on a program that has them, those will be recorded. You can watch them back. You can read back. They come with transcripts normally as well. So you can kind of, transcripts which are taken from voice, so they won't always be 100% accurate, but you can kind of follow those and kind of catch up that way if you ever miss a session. But please do, if you miss something, just drop us an email, ask a question. Um, right, so I've got one last nice one. This is kind of a quick fire question, and then I have the special question for Ganai at the end. So the quick fire one is, what is your favorite place on campus? Mm, my you're favorite not, place on campus. You're not allowed to say Starbucks. <laughs> um, the football pitches. Nice. Uh, the Barber Institute of Fine Arts uh, over by, over that way. <laughs> Uh, the Lapworth Museum of Ge Geology, which is also over that way. No, it's that way. It's that over that way. The other over that way. way. Oh, I'm so turned around. <laughs> it's that way. <laughs> Behind us. And I'll go with the Winterbourne Gardens, oh. especially lovely in May when the bluebells are out. Thank you. So I've got one last question. Ganai, this is specifically for you. I've, I've been waiting for it. It's, I mean, you, you should be. It's, it's a very important question. So, and this is, this is, of all of the questions we've had, this has been the most, most upvoted by a distance. And the question, I mean, it's for you because it's a question about studying law at the university and kind of what that's like. And the, the question is, is it going to be like Legally Blonde, the movie? Yes. <laughs> um, well, the studying part, probably not. Um, he's still just a student. I do like to remind people that um, I think there's a difference between making that jump from being a student to actually um, practicing law. It's Every time you tell someone, oh, I do law, they think, wow, you're already a lawyer. But um, there is quite a ladder that you still need to go up. Um, but I hope, even my, for my own sake, that it will be slightly something like that, because it will be quite enjoyable then. 
Yeah. I like the way you managed to make a serious question I'm... out of that. I'm <laughs> profoundly impressed. But we do break into song in every seminar. <laughs> That's just her. That's just her. Um, right, on that note, I really ought to let Saganthi get somewhere near the biscuits. I ought to let you get something near, somewhere near the biscuits. Thank you for um, listening to us. Thank you very much for all of your questions, even the one that was about Legally Blonde. Um, before you go and have tea and coffee and a biscuit and have a chat with all of the nice people sat at the back there and with us, um, can we thank Deborah, Celia and Acacia um, from the Guild? And can you also thank... thank Ganai in particular, but also Saganthi, Antonia and Marcus for answering those questions so well. And our fabulous... And indeed our, our very clever team who've been feeding me the questions from behind the scenes there as well. But thank you very much to all of them. Thank you to you for coming and please do stay and have a chat with us.